executive clemency was a bittersweet victory, to be honest with you, because it didn't take me very long um, after I got out and uh, the excitement and the exhilaration wore off that I realized that um, I may be free, but um, so many of my friends and other people aren't. And um, as long as they're not, then I'm not really. So I started uh, the Can Do Foundation, which is clemency for all nonviolent drug offenders, to try to continue to help some of the women I left behind. I did time with Danielle, Barbara, Mary Richardson. Um, they've all done well over 20 years. Um, these are all guys who are serving life. These are for pot. He's for LSD. I just got back from Washington, D.C. We haven't seen very many women that received a commutation yet. So let's get busy with the women. I served time with Angie. Angie Jenkins would be an excellent candidate for clemency. The New York Times asked me to weigh in on clemency and who, if anyone, should be given priority status. And without hesitation, I said, mothers, women, because I was in there and witnessed women caught up in conspiracy cases where they are literally serving 10 to life because they were the girlfriend or wife of someone in the drug trade. And often the men, like my ex-husband, cut a deal and they are free. So the woman is serving their time. Ms. Pova, um, this is certainly very personal to you. You have experience here that many of us in this room don't have. Having gone through the whole conspiracy in the drug trade issue, where her husband essentially was the kingpin and she was the essentially the ignorant housewife. These women do a hard time. I was sentenced to 25. I got 24 years. Were they unfairly imprisoned because they fell in love with the wrong man? And most of the women that I met in prison I believe were in, in situations where they didn't feel as if they could get out of the relationship and there's a manipulation factor in there. There's codependency issues. Um, you know, it'd be great if we all had a personal therapist, but we don't. Ramona Brandt is serving life without parole. She's a first offender. She was a victim of domestic abuse. Please grant clemency to Ramona Brandt. <laughs> that are very cliche because I don't think people understand what's really happening. Conspiracy, which is most federal drug cases, if you further the conspiracy one step, they say you're guilty for everything that happens in the conspiracy. You no longer need any tangible evidence to convict somebody for a conspiracy case. I call it the best kept secret in the nation, and that's the conspiracy law that was expanded in 1988 made it very easy for prosecutors to indict people on the very fringe. So girlfriends, wives, grandmothers I've done time with. I filed, I filed for clemency three different times. I started in 2004 and was denied two different times before the third one in 2014 was um, granted by President Obama. We serve time with Danielle Metz. Danielle She's someone Metz. who's very close to our heart. Uh, we're hoping that President Obama will grant her clemency, hopefully in the next batch, and bring her home because yes. she's already served over 20 years. And yes. she was really, frankly, just a wife who had ancillary contact. But conspiracy holds you responsible for everything that everybody else in the conspiracy did. Yes. Barbara got 30 years, I got 24, and she got life because we went to trial. We exercised our Sixth Amendment right to trial. But when we want tougher laws, why are we putting the little ladies in jail and not putting the drug lord in jail? Not putting the guy who's making it in jail. Giving him four months for turning her in. If you cooperate and you help convict other criminals, then you can possibly get more lenient sentences. Do you know In the case she... of both of these women, they refuse to cooperate. If you don't cooperate, we'll indict you for conspiracy, and then you're looking at 20 to life. So that's the blackmail tool. Mandatory minimums only apply to people who don't work with the prosecution. When you work with them, then they don't apply. They only apply to people who either couldn't cooperate. Sometimes you're low man on the totem pole. You don't have any information. Rita Becerra, who's right over here, she was a hairdresser for, for 21 years. She started dating a guy within nine months. 
They moved in together. He started dealing drugs. She said, I knew he was dealing drugs, but I was in love with him. I went and stood on my feet and cut hair every single day. He got arrested. He cooperated. He told them she doesn't know anything because she, you know, I mean, yeah, she spent some money. They still, the conspiracy law is a two for one. You get the boyfriend and the man, and you throw the girlfriend in the indictment too. They didn't even offer her a deal because they knew she didn't have any information to give. She wasn't part of it. She ended up with 27 years. That poor woman was denied clemency. First offender. The president is concerned about these mandatory minimum sentences. What do you think is the wrong here in this? Everyone talks about mandatory minimum, mandatory minimum. That doesn't explain how we're indicted. It doesn't explain how they make the case. And our cases, all of these women, we were indicted with a group of people. It's United States versus 15, 20, sometimes 30, 40 people, all listed in one indictment. These aren't cases where one person gets caught and it's a case by case scenario where you go before a judge. I never heard the term mandatory minimum until I got to prison and I didn't get a mandatory minimum and they didn't threaten me with the mandatory minimum. I was told that you will either cooperate with us or we're going to indict you for conspiracy. So for everyone that thinks that these laws are putting the bad guys away, I uh, started the Can Do Foundation and we have case after case after case where women or minor participants are held responsible for the uh, main culprit and the main culprit is free. Josephine Legazma. I served time with Josephine. She's already served over 20 years. She's been in since 1992. Has an excellent record in prison. Josephine Ledesma. 24 years ago, Josephine Ledesma was sent to federal prison for drug offenses. And she was supposed to spend the rest of her life there. But yesterday, her sentence was commuted by President Obama.